Hi everyone, Pete here, and welcome to this video about the area rule for non-right-angled triangles. This video is part of a series explaining all the GCSE trigonometry content that you need to know, so feel free to check out the playlist linked down in the description below. So we don't actually need to know where the area rule comes from, or derive the area rule. However, I think it's a useful exercise because it helps us remember the rule itself. With the cosine rule and the sine rule, the proofs for those are a little bit complicated, so I've omitted them in those videos. However, I'll show you this proof here. Again, this rule is for non-right angle triangles, so this is how we label them. I'm then going to place on the height of this triangle. Of course, this is the perpendicular height, so it's going to make a 90 degree angle with the base length BC. Let's just label this bottom point where the height touches the base as x. I'm also going to label the height as little h. So we know the area of a triangle is calculated using the perpendicular height as a half base times the height. So in this case, the area would be equal to a half times a times by h. So we look at this triangle on the left, and we see that this is in fact a right angle triangle as well. I'm going to use this one because it makes the formula look a little bit nicer at the very end. So we have this angle C, the opposite side H, we also have the hypotenuse B. So in order to find H, we would use sine of C is equal to the opposite H over the hypotenuse B. Let's rearrange this to make H the subject of the formula. So H is B times by sine of the angle C. Finally, going back into that area equation and replacing that perpendicular height h, we find that the area is a half times by a times by b sine c. We can see that in this final form of the equation, we have no perpendicular height. We only have two side lengths of our non right angle triangle, which are a and b, and one capital letter, which is our angle c. So the setup is very similar to the cosine rule. The things that we require are a side, an angle, and a side. Only three variables in order to work out the area of a non-right angle triangle. Let's utilize the area rule for finding the area of this triangle. In this example, we can see that we have a side length, an angle, and then another side length creating this sort of side angle side sandwich that we talked about during the cosine rule video. Now that we've spotted that and we're asked to find the area, we know that we can just write down the rule, which is the area is a half AB sine of C. We can now replace these unknown variables with what we know from the question. Placing all of this into our calculator, we find that the answer is 39.4. We can see that working out the area of a non-right angle triangle is very simple if we have two side lengths with the angle between them. Let's take a look at this example here where we're going to use the area rule in order to find a side length. The first thing we're going to do is label the sides and angles of this triangle in a way that suits us. We can see that the angle in question here, 27, is shouldered by these two sides that are length 20 and x. We have, of course, side, angle, side, which means we can use the area rule for this triangle. We know that the angle should always be the capital C, so let's label that on, and opposite that will be small c. Now, it doesn't actually matter which way around we label the remaining two sides, small a and small b. So let's just label it this way round, meaning that the angles will be labeled as such. We can now write down the area rule for the triangle. Substituting what we know, we know that the area is 75, that was already given to us. A is x, and B is 20, and the angle is 27 degrees. Let's divide both sides by a half, by 20, and by sine of 27 to leave us with x as the subject of the formula. 
Once we've done this, we can now place the right-hand side of this equation into the calculator in order to work out the side length x, which works out to be 16.5 centimeters. Let's take a look at this example. It's more of a problem-solving question than the previous questions that we have looked at together. We are told that the area of this non-right angle triangle is 200. Whenever you see an area given, you know you are going to use the area rule for non-right angle triangles. So this triangle is already labeled for us. We have the angles already on there. We can pop on the sides then, which are opposite to those angles. We're asked to find the perimeter, which means that we're going to be looking for this side A in order to sum up all sides of the triangle to find that perimeter. In order to find A, however, I would need more information about this triangle. Remember to use the sine rule or the cosine rule, I need four pieces of information in total, with one of them being unknown. For the area rule, I also have four pieces of information, however one of those is an area. If I wanted to work out the third side length, it would either have to be the sine rule or the cosine rule. That means I need an angle first. Let's use the area rule in order to find this angle. Now that we've written down the area rule, we need to be careful because the triangle is not labeled for us to just use this rule straight away. The angle that we are looking to find is this angle capital A. Remember that we want side angle side. We have a side, an angle, and a side sandwiching that angle in the center. So for the sake of this section, we would have a half times b times c times sine of capital A. It doesn't matter which way round we label our triangle, of course, so for now, so as long as we remember the two side lengths neighbor the angle, we can always use this rule. So these are the two side lengths, 19 and 25, and the angle that they shoulder is capital A, so that would be sine capital A. Now, of course, this is equal to the area which we've already been given, that is 200. We can rearrange this equation now, dividing both sides by a half, dividing both sides by 19, and dividing both sides by 25. I wouldn't normally write fractions inside of another fraction, but this is just a step of working out that we're going to place into the calculator eventually, so I'm not too fussed about that. The next step now is, of course, to do the inverse of sine to both sides of the equation. Working that out to four significant figures is 57.36 degrees. Let's pop that on our triangle. Now that we have an angle and two sides, that means we have three variables out of the four required to use the sine rule or the cosine rule. Remember that the cosine rule is used when we have side angle side. And here we've already seen we have side angle side because that's the condition for using the area rule. Let's write down the cosine rule then, since we know we're going to use it. And after writing it down, we can actually see that the triangle is labeled for us to just use this cosine rule without thinking too much. All of the letters correspond to the correct things. We are going to find the side length small a, that is already on the left-hand side of the equation, meaning that the capital A is the angle in question. And that is what we just worked out. So now I can just place in what I know and solve for small a. Now that I've rearranged and placed in everything that I know, I can just put this right hand side into the calculator to work out the value of a, which comes out to be 21.4 centimeters. Finally, I can sum together all three of those sides to work out the perimeter, which I find to be 65.4 centimeters. Let's take a look at this example that also includes a bearing. We're asked to work out the bearing of C from A to begin with. So we know to look for the letter after the word from, that will be our starting position. So we can see that we're going to be starting here at this north arrow already labeled. We're then going to turn clockwise until we get to the direction of travel. So we're going to be turning through this angle here. So that would be the bearing of C from A. What that means is we're going to work out this leftover angle inside of the triangle ABC in order to work out the total bearing. We can see that inside of this triangle, 
we know three pieces of information, three sides. We also can see that using this as our angle in focus, we have a side length with an angle sandwiched in between and another side length with the two side lengths values known. That means we can use the cosine rule because we've spotted side angle side. Let's write down the cosine rule then. We can see that the triangle is in fact labeled correctly with A being our correct angle. So we know that the opposite side of A is going to be little a. We know that this 35 kilometers is little c and small b is 30. Let's substitute what we know already into this equation. We're going to need to rearrange this equation to get cosine of a on one side. So what I have done here is subtracted 15 squared from both sides. I've added 2 times 30 times 35 times cosine of a to both sides, and then I have divided both sides by 2 times 30 times 35. The next step that I can do is the inverse of cosine to both sides. Placing that into the calculator, I find the value of a to be 25.2 degrees. Combining that with the angle 36 that is given to us, I can now work out the bearing of c from a. So the bearing we have to write as three figures up in front of the decimal point, so it will be 061.2 degrees as our bearing of c from a. The area of the triangle ABC is very simple to work out now that we have found the angle A. Using this angle, I have, of course, a side, an angle, and another side. All three of those variables known to me, I can use the area rule now to work out the area. So substituting in the variables that I know, remembering that the two side lengths either side of the angle are what is referred to in the equation as A and B, so the two side lengths here are 35 and 30, and the angle in between is what is referred to as capital C. However, in our case, that is A, and we have already worked out the numerical value, which is 25.2 degrees. So now I just have an expression I can place into my calculator, which comes out to be 223.5 kilometers squared. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.